Welcome back to my channel, brothers and sisters. I'm your host, Ramurice the High King. If you're new to my channel, consider smashing the subscribe button, the like button. Let the algorithm know what's good. Let me know what's good. On this channel, everything that is Africa, everything that is black, we talk about it, we celebrate it, we embrace it, we share. Not just because as black people, we need to be controlling our own narrative, but at the same time, because information in this day and age is war there are way too many powers that be and way too many ordinary individuals constantly talking trash about africa about south africa about everything that we as black people do and try to do and when we succeed they talk trash even when we're doing better than them they talk trash when they are doing worse to make themselves feel better they talk trash and so we control our own narrative. We tell our own stories. Right now though, as you can imagine, Africa is moving. Our leaders are standing tall. They're making collective decisions. They are speaking with one voice. But most people still refuse to see it. The more you pay attention, the more you realize African leaders are just telling the world how things are going to work from now on you've been seeing it with all the european summits all the asian summits all the american summits all these european leaders coming to africa to speak with the presidents to sign memorandums of understanding and green energy deals blah 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 but we see at the same time their economies are crashing they're dying they're struggling you see the weather is coming against them we see an aging population Old ass people, we see people no longer having children. We see the sun heating up to cook their <laughs> non-melanated behinds. Judgment is at hand. The energy of this world has shifted. The African man and black woman, the origins of humanity, are reclaiming our throne and there's nothing anyone can do to stop it. In this current summit, you see the world leaders being gently instructed. I mean, our African leaders are trying to gently tell these folks how things are going to function from now on. And it's wonderful, especially more with uh, President Ramaphosa, who has, you know, despite what people believe about him, whatever it is, it's nice seeing us leaders occasionally just, you know, tell you where to get off and where to chill now. Embraced by everyone. Yeah. So we are going to discuss it. President Macron. Let us see what our president has been inspired by. Because the comments on you on um, TikTok were that Putin must have said something to him or he must know something or whatever. But now he's very confident. Now he handles Europeans. It's quite assuring. Uh, let me start off by saying. Thank you very much, uh, President Macron. Uh, let me start off by saying, uh, President Lula, don't worry. When we have the BRICS meeting, the issue of currency is top on the agenda. So we are going to discuss it. That's a wording shot. Just, you know, put it out there. Letting the world know that we're separating from everybody else in terms of currency and financial systems. They'll be out in the wind. President Macron, I just want to start off on a very positive note in terms of what I think is evolving here. I think there is consensus that is clearly embraced by everyone that we need to address climate and poverty. Uh, because they go together, there's an excess. And as it were, we need to burn the candle on both sides. So that's important. So that's agreed. And we all recognize and accept that we need capital at scale to address the key challenges that many countries in the world face, particularly the developing economy countries. And we also would be agreed that there needs to be 
more cooperation and coordination between your development banks, multilateral development banks and the private sector. Uh, there needs to be coordination so that there is no fragmentation which you kept talking about. But I think what is important to many of us is that there should be solid consensus on the reform of the financial architecture of the world. Mm. Because without that reform, the dreams and the objectives that we have to address our challenges will not be realized. And that ref those reforms need to touch on a whole range of issues. Mr. Mo Ibrahim yesterday even spoke about something that we may think is insignificant, that the boards of directors of your multilateral institutions are not made up of independent directors. They are largely internal people or shareholders. So that in itself for us is an important reform. Mm. Uh, we also need to look at the distribution of the special drawing rights. Uh, I, I find it a bit difficult to be told that this is set in the rules and it will forever be like that and that it's either you get zero or you get 34 billion. In our view, this is not a zero-sum game. Damn, again being told outright that don't come at us with your rigid systems it's either you do what we say or you don't accept what we offer you or you don't Ramaphosa has been saying since the covid era we don't want your scraps off the table so stop coming to us with scraps it's a game where we all need to be dealt with with equity uh, in an equitable manner and there is a need for reform in that regard as well and the other important thing for this to happen uh, it will help us not to participate as unequal cousins in these institutions mm, it no will more scraps to participate fully and uh, so that we don't have a sense that we are beggars mm. that we are being dealt with uh, out of generosity. I think it's important in the new era that the world is in now that uh, there should be a good measure of equality among sovereign nations. A gentle, ooh, look at that. I like the look on his face. There should be a good measure of equality. Look at that. Equality among they hate it. They hate it so much. Man, the world is changing and this is how things are going to run from now on. We, the mineral rich countries, will not take nonsense from you, parasites. And the parasites are like, oh my God, the Africans are waking up. Oh jeez, oh jeez, what are we going to do? What are we? There's nothing they can do. Germany itself is going through an economic n nightmare right now. Sovereign nations. You know, recently, quality among sovereign nations. Mm. You know, recently, uh, seven African countries. Ooh, man. Look at Macron. Look at him. Nervous. He cannot believe it. I mean, he's calling this thing. I mean, you, Macron, who's been begging to join. Who, who, who asks to be invited to an exclusive arrangement? An exclusive party. BRICS is an exclusive party, family party where you are exclusively to not be invited you western leaders and there he is trying to run away from america trying to run away from european crisis because they've been telling you france is a country without resources without africa france would collapse and i was running around like a headless chicken it's amusing look at him I decided to go squirm little parasite go and put a call for peace to ukraine and to russia mm. He side eyes. <laughs> we each keep side eyeing each other. Boris was represented. Uh, Republic of Congo was represented. Senegal was represented. Uganda, uh, as well as South Mama Africa. Motley. So we were all represented. Mama and Mia Egypt as well. So we were all at one. That 
all of us in one voice at least you know it's not like we as african countries have to collectively agree on everything but when we're dealing with outsiders we will speak with one voice we will send a handful of the sharpest economies out here and let them know europe this is what it is china this is what it is us of a this is what's going to be even as we were going to address an issue of the war which has had a negative impact on the african continent look at all these white people these europeans i mean my god <laughs> i mean the sun should just heat up tomorrow because they're going to hate living in a world where the africans are telling them how things are going to function from now on they've been destroying this planet consuming all the resources to maintain their little tiny lifestyles trying to create a financial pact for what bro we don't need you which is the rise in prices for food rise in prices for fertilizers we were clear that we are not going there as beggars mm. we're not going to ask for a favor to both ukraine and russia we were going <laughs> Listen to that shit, Macron. Listen clearly, Macron. In there to say, open up both Ukraine and Russia. We're not going to ask for a favor to both Ukraine and Russia. We were going there to say, open up the Black Sea Channel so that the, sea, uh, the, the, the grains and the fertilizers should go into the world market. So we were not on a begging mission. Even as we are in great need as a continent and all that, that should go to demonstrate. Man, he just told them outright. Listen, we're asking, but be rest assured we don't need you. And the finger, let it be clear. <laughs> that is a continent and all that that should go to demonstrate that africa is should never be seen as a continent that needs generosity we want to be treated as equals even in the multilateral institutions we want to be treated as equals and if our equity is at a low ebb there must be ways in which that can be addressed I for one don't want to be treated as an equal. I want to be goddamn acknowledged as having the mineral resources of the world. As being the biological progenitors of all mankind and they need to chill. Mankind needs to chill. To us this is very important. Our sovereignty is one of the things that we hold on dearly to. And we demonstrated that very clearly to both President Zelensky and to President Putin when it came to this issue. Even as there were suggestions that, yes, we can donate this, we can donate mm -hmm. that. Said, we want you to release these great... Donate for what, nigga? I'll pay for that shit. <laughs> donate for what? I'll pay for it. I got money, nigga. You know, we in Africa, we pay cash money. You pay things cash. There's no debt. There's no lay by. There's no buying things on credit. If you don't got the money, you don't get it. Pure and simple. So we got the mineral resources. We got the money. People need it like, yo, they, they need to chill. Fertilizers to the world market so that the world can trade in these commodities and other issues we can handle in a different way. I wanted to make that point so that it should be understood where mm. Africa has evolved up to. Now he's driving it home. We Get it clearly. We want to be key players on the world stage. We want to be key players even in the financial uh, markets and uh, in the MDBs. He's being gentle. Keep that in mind. He's being diplomatic as possible. But he's outright saying, hey, <laughs> we're about to make currencies based on our resources. If you don't get on this program, you will have nothing but fake fiat, worthless economies. Now, these are the positive things. I do 
Uh -oh. President Macron want us to address another issue which Ooh. to us is a bit of a negative. Uh, you will have heard President Sisi talking about the 100 billion that was promised in Paris. Mm -mm -mm. President Sasungwesu yesterday as well also spoke about it at the dinner. Now, there is that issue that a number of the commitments that have been made have not really been fully lived up to. But before I get into details, let me meet. They made a lot of promises. They strung us along. Today, nothing has happened. That's been the relationship with Europe. Let me say that we recognize the many initiatives that have been put on the table. And a number of countries here have done so. Germany has gone out of the way to put a number of initiatives. And the U.S. <laughs> has also done. Man, they hate it. You have to put in a breath mint. Probably has like a gastrointestinal thingy. Whenever he gets nervous, it's bad breath. Poor Macron. And a number of things. But there have been times when we felt like we were beggars. There you go. I played a key role as chair of uh, the African Union during the COVID period. We felt like we were beggars when it... And he's saying we. Telling them outright. We know what happened. We, you know what you did. Let's not be gaslighting each other right now. Let's accept. We were looking like fools <laughs> out there. It came to vaccine availability. When we felt we needed access to vaccines and the Northern Hemisphere countries had bought all the vaccines in the world mm -hmm. and they were hogging them. Mm -hmm. And they didn't want to release them at the time when we needed them most. And we felt like we were begging. And at times it felt like there would just be droppings from the table. That yes. Man, the guilt, the look of a guilty man. Look at that Roman ass nose. Devil. We will give you that and that. And let me tell you something that that generated a lot of resentment. Ooh, boy. We, we resented that. Mm. And it got worse when we said we want to manufacture our own vaccines. And when we went to the WTO, there was a lot of resistance. We went to the WTO. And it got worse. I'll tell you something that people, that yes, we will give and you. And let me and tell you something. And let me tell you something that that generated a lot of resentment. And he was he was angry that time. I think that's when he changed his allegiance. Like, you know what? Because people have accused him of being, you know, a, a puppet of the Europeans and so forth. But like, that time you could tell he was like, nah, niggas. This is messed up. And <laughs> they, if they're on, they're going to find out. We, we resented that. And it got worse when mm. we said we want to manufacture our own vaccines. And when we went when to the W. Back when they were saying there's going to be dead bodies all over Africa, so the pandemic. So they, they predicted that Africans were going to get deleted in mass because of the virus that was going around. And then they orchestrated a way of keeping vaccines to themselves. So, wh what? Were we not supposed to notice that they were playing games with people's lives? For profit? And then they were surprised when we didn't die like that. Like we just handled it smoothly because of all our lessons learned from fighting Ebola and HIV. And we, and they hated that too. You couldn't believe how gently we handled that thing while they were dying in the millions. And then we were like, no, you know what? We don't even need you on the vaccine manufacturing anyway because we'll handle that shit ourselves too. That's royal. WTO, there was a lot of resistance. In 
W2HO is corrupt in my opinion. No one must resist it. WHO, yeah. Yes. And we kept saying, what is more important, life or mm. profits mm -hmm. by your big pharmaceutical companies? And that, that too, I must tell you now. Oh General man, look at the look on that dude's face. The president of Zambia, right next to the president or the former president of Germany. The shame. Can you imagine holding up a summit and then being accused outright? That not even accused, told what you did. And that we're mad at you. We're not forgiving you. We're in a situation right now and you're going to know how upset we are. That was tragic. That was tragic. ...and deepened that disappointment and resentment and deepened that disappointment and resentment on our part because we felt like life in the northern hemisphere is much more important mm -hmm. than life in the global south i remember noticing that too i was like yo need to be addressed and to I hell with mankind all seated here like this because we've got to get to the heart of these matters and address them naturally this former generation still believes but the younger generation we saw it clearly and we we're like nah mankind can kiss ass on that hey we're doing us now africa for afros period now i come to promises that have been made and chancellor schultz was saying schultz was saying we, we've got to walk the talk yes we want to see the talk being walked mm. President Sassoon Wesu yesterday said at the dinner, a hundred billion dollars was promised per year. And he was saying, I've never seen that. And many of us will testify that that hundred billion dollars has, has never really been made available. And this should stand out as something that needs to be addressed. Because sometimes we sit at conferences like this, Mm -hmm. and say yes we'll make this available this available and we believe you oh believe you but now Aww. the tire must hit the tar we must now see action flowing from that now i want to then talk about something very practical president sasungwesu raised it yesterday he said he would be happy if flowing from this summit, we do something very practical on the infrastructure side. Having said that 600 million people in Africa do not have electricity, and yet we've got all the resources to generate electricity, particularly the mighty Congo River. And that- I for one am not interested in having energy deals with Europe. There are way too many Africans who are engineers, architects, scientists, and chemistry geniuses. We can manufacture our own things from now on. That's the thing. That's the only thing. Confidence in what we possess as a continent and, and our skills as a people. We no longer need Europe. They are literally obsolete in the story of African development. This is just a sad show of, oh please, oh please Africa, please don't leave us behind. And Africa saying, hey, we've been waiting, we're done with you, we're going to decolonize, and you're going back to the dark ages. Enjoy. There have been plans to build a number of power stations that will generate, in my calculation, up to 70,000 megawatts. And he said, and I want to speak in support of Mame. this proposal, that to prove that these summits are not summits where we just talk, flowing from the Paris uh, COP as well as others, let us now put money on the table and collectively say we are going to address this mega project a mega project which will in the end generate electricity for up to 12, 15 African countries all at one go. 
And this is a project that I think the multilateral development banks here working together, the call that you've made, President Macron, can actually fund. And where, as we rise from this, we should be able to say the Inga Dam is now going to be developed into the Inga Power Station, the one that President Sasungwesu mentioned, and the next one as well. Mm. If we can do that, then we as Africans will now be convinced. Hey, my man. Hey, players been out here dropping gemstones, huh? He's been on a mission trying to teach African peoples like, yo, beware about European deals. Putting on, he's always on the, uh, the EU parliament. Also making noise like, hey, what the hell are we doing over there in Africa? He needs to stop. Ah, champion, champion. That these summits are really meaningful. We will now go home and say, Ah, <laughs> bite your nail, playboy. Nervous. Look at you. You blushing, huh? You know what? It's worthwhile <coughs> going to these summits, coming to Europe, and to listen to all the promises because they are willing to act on the promises. He's now saying we're basically done listening to your lies. Either you deliver or that's it. This is what President Macron, I believe, <coughs> will be one of the most important outcomes. The reform of the financial architecture, as well as a practical project, infrastructure project that is going to uh, add a lot of value. President Sisi and I have been talking about a, a, a railway from Cape Town to Cairo for years. We will leave that for the next uh, summit. Uh oh. But the one <laughs> on generating electricity and building uh, power stations on the Inga Dam is the most important that is immediate that I believe needs to be addressed now. Let's get that done and then we will be convinced that you are serious with the Ooh. promises that you make. Thank you. God damn. Hey. That's right. Thank you, Cyril. Thank you, everybody. Mesdames et messieurs, le chef d'état. Man, quiet. Anyway, family, let me know what you think in the comments below. It's a new world out here. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.